Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are looking at a brand new game engine. Now this one is focused on creating 2D games. It's a simple game engine designed around the idea of, you know, creating game jam entries, that kind of stuff. Uh, it is also completely free, and it is open source as well. And finally, it is called Pixelbox. Now if you're interested, Pixelbox is available at... Uh, pixelbox.itch.io forward slash pixelbox. Don't worry, I'll link that link and all the other links down below, so don't worry about you know keeping track of it. Uh, but Pixelbox.js is all about creating 2D games in JavaScript. You can use ECMA script 5 or 6. There is no TypeScript support, by the way, uh, but it runs in an Electron-based application, so it just seems like a local install. A very simple project creation. Uh, there's a built-in web server. You can test your project with one click. The uh, typical developer web tools, developer tools, debugging tools, and all that stuff are built in. Full-blown level editor, tile editor, music editor, mod tracker built in there, uh, and so much more. So what we're going to do is jump in and take a look. All right, we're also going to be using Monkey Warp, by the way, one of the uh, example projects that he did. Uh, so let's let's jump in and look. All right, so here we are. This is uh, Pixelbox running. As you see, pretty straightforward. The majority of our screen is being taken up by our map editor. Uh, you use a typical tile set approach. So uh, this one is using a fixed palette. You can see the palette control down here. Obviously, they're going for that whole Game Boy retro look, the uh, four color monochrome. Um, but you can see uh, how you place tiles. You can pick a tile anywhere here, so I can pick a selection of tiles, and I can start painting a selection of tiles. They've got automatic brushes that you can create. You can actually create your own tile brushes to do things like uh, randomize, uh, draw hills, and so on. So let's do a hill brush, see what it does. Actually, I have no idea how that works. But you can create your own sprite draw or tile drawing brushes in JavaScript that can be embedded directly inside of the editor. Um, but yeah, it's pretty straightforward. If you've used any kind of a tile editor, you know what we're working with. You select your tile, you paint your tile. Over here, um, if you pick an empty spot, for example, you can double click it and you can actually bring up a built in sprite editor. Your tile selection is over here. You can basically start drawing and creating your own tiles at this point in time. You also have the ability to bring in sprites, um, like so. Uh, sprites can be created into texture atlases by basically clicking on the folder and creating an atlas out of it. These are mostly all at, so I could create an atlas easily. Tools are built in for you. And that's kind of the idea behind, again, this is a very simple, game engine idea. Once you've got what you want up and going, basically just go ahead and click run. There again is the developer console built in and there is your game running. And I'm not going to blow your ears out, so let's just stop that. So you've got a, a web silver built directly in. You can see over here uh, where it is running and what port it is on. So if you want, you can click here and then you can go over to your browser of choice, paste that URL in. It hosts it as a web server for you. So unlike um, with a lot of JavaScript applications, you don't need to worry about setting up a web server or anything else. Pixelbox essentially acts as that web server for you. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of it. We come over here, dev tool we saw in action. You can shut down the server at any particular time. We've got some control over settings right here. So you can map your controls to different settings over here. You can bring in various different components that you're gonna work with. Um, you've got option between ECMA script five or six. Um, and some control over your uh, your screen. This is the app, this is the screen resolution of your game. So you're setting how many tiles wide and so on and so forth. You can make it full screen and you can make it resizable or not. And then finally we come into view and that is where the majority of our tools are. We're actually seeing most of these tools in action, right? So here's your tile sheet, your tile brush, your main clipboard, your sprite editor, your map editor, and your assets view and your palette view. So if you want to um, you know expand beyond that, we've got a couple of other ones that are going on, but the two biggest are the music tracker and the bleeper, not beeper, bleeper. Uh, this is a um, an audio editing tool for creating sound effects and such. Let me just make sure that, so I'm just gonna capture this secondarily. So what you can do is you can come in here and you can create a new track like so, and then you've got different waveforms you can draw with like that. Uh, you can control your volume like that and then play. And then we'll just randomize that out a bit. Let's do one of, one of these. Or one of these. Or one of these. There you go. And you can basically use that guy to go ahead and create all kinds of bleeps, blips, bloops, and that kind of stuff that you would need in your game. So if you really are keeping track right now, you've got a tool for sprites, you've got a tool for tiles, for painting maps, uh, for doing sound effects. The only thing kind of missing at this point, well, there's two things. There is a lack of music and then a um, code. 
So let's go to the music side of the equation first. So come on over here, we can see um, we've got things like uh, this guy right here, music tracker. Now this guy is beyond me. To be honest, I've been playing around with it for a bit and I can't figure out how to actually work with it, but there is full blown documentation. This is a complete tracker that's actually built in on top of that. So on top of you know defining uh, notes all the way throughout, pitch, volume, detune, duty, etc. cetera. Uh, we can also come, let's leave there. How do I exit? All right, uh, we can come up here, click Untitled, and you see here we've got various different options. So we can do things here like we can do special effects on the channel. So there are none right now. Uh, we can come in here and define an effect. So we can put a reverb effect in and we control it right there. We can come back over here and do uh, a delay effect. And then again, you can have controls over it right here. So there is a full tracker built in here. You've got sampling support as well. So you can bring in uh, you know audio samples that you can work with in your music. And then we've got theming. So if you want to change up the look of the tracker, that option is all there. So basically this is something called Pata Tracker that the, um, the author has created and also embedded within this uh, uh, application. So it kind of ships with Pixelbox, but it's a standalone application and could be the subject of its own video. And you can actually download this on its own as we will see in just a second. So if you're on the music and tracker side of things, there is a tracker built in here. I for the life of me can't figure out how to use it, but I will link to some documentation that can show you how to go ahead and use it. So we got a pretty complete engine development kit here. We got a music tracker for creating soundtracks. Uh, we have a sound editor for creating special effects. We got a map editor for creating our maps. We got a tile set editor, tile creator. Um, yeah. So you got everything you need to create a basic game. Now we're going to get into the coding side of things. Well, that can be done. Uh, we're going to go open the source section. This is going to open up a Windows Explorer window where our source code is. You can see it's all available right here. Here's how your project kind of looks. Now, again, I'm using Monkey Warp that was downloaded from uh, their GitHub site. So if you want a, a working project to start with, that option is there. It's also really, really easy to start with a clean slate design. I'll show you that in a second. But here we go. So our source is available right here. Let's open that up with code. All right, here you go. So here is a simple, simple setup. So here is your entry point. Entry point is basically just defining an update loop. So this is your called once per frame and they're defining it as view manager .update. So let's head on over there. Here you can see again, a bunch of export updates. So we got the update call. So the current view is being updated. There are several different views by the way. Um, and you'll, you'll find them all the way throughout here, but you can see it basically enumerates the views and goes through. So let's go into the view section and there you're gonna see a view kind of is like a screen. So if you've got your like your main menu or whatever, uh, here's the splash screen view. This is what we'll start with. So it'll first go in there and then you can see things like loading the sound, um, playing the sound. The code is very simple and clean. Uh, so it's almost like a basic style approach. Here's how you clear your screen. So here's basically for the main menu, uh, this is the code that handles it. Up here, it's really simple. Basically, your positioning stuff and preloading a sound. And then uh, loop through, clean out the, um, clear the screen completely. Uh, if you press the enter key, open up the titles, title view. So you're going to be switching over to here instead. So that's kind of how you transition between scenes. And here you can see if uh, the logo is at a certain position, start playing the sound effect for the logo. And then finally, draw the logo in that position. So it uses a very basic uh, both in uh, actual meaning and in terms of programming language, looking API. We'll get to the API instructions in just a second. But as you can see, the code itself is quite easy to understand. Let's, let's go back to the very beginning process. Here's if you go ahead and create a new project. There is a bug, by the way. So what you're going to want to do is don't type the project name in until you've uh, actually entered something down here. So you're going to want to make sure that you select a directory first and then name it. So if you don't, this will have like a Linux style thing. It's a known bug right now. So pick your location first and then your project name. And then it's create project and your project is created. As you see, you get a default uh, tile set to start working with. You can obviously bring in your own tile set. It's just a PNG file. Um, load those in and then basically you would just select your map or create a map and then just start drawing. So there's how you begin your game. Oh yeah, let's, so we'll paint that. So it's smart enough to know how to paint the brush like that. So there we got a couple of trees going on. And we've also, again, we've got other tools here. So we've got like a flood fill. Uh, so there's the bucket. And as you can see here, we don't have all the brushes we had in the other ones because some of those brushes were actually custom created brushes for that actual example. So you can create your own special dynamic brushes as well. So let's just go ahead, pick like a grass and we'll do a paint. And obviously you're going to want to create multiple layers or you're going to want to put things on top of each other so it doesn't look so crap. So there, we got a background layer going on. Now let's grab our tree, go to pencil 
and start drawing it. So there, once again, you don't have multiple layer supports in the map editor. So if you're gonna wanna do this, you're gonna wanna create a map for foreground, midground, background, that kind of thing. And then in your code, you load the maps in when you load up your game level. And loading a map is something like calling the function map and specifying the name of your map that you can specify here. My name is there you go so that's pixel box that is how easy it is to get up and going and create your own project by the way deleting a project is pretty much just a simple boom it's gone and if you download a project you can open it that way so that that is pixel box in a nutshell it's a very simple confined self-contained complete game engine and now let's get to some of the support documentation so it's interestingly enough the itch page is missing a lot of the details which is really strange you can come in here uh it's a name your price thing but basically you can name your price as zero it's available as a download for both Mac and um, Windows. Sorry, Linux, hopefully it will work under Wine. If someone tries that out, let me know if it works for you. Uh, it's an Electron app, so I, I actually don't know why it wouldn't run on Linux out of the box. I imagine he's just not doing a build. But so you can grab it here, but now what you may be wondering is, okay, well, how do I learn how to use this? Well, none of the documentation is actually on itch.io, which is a little strange, and nor does it actually link from uh, the application. So to find the documentation, again, I will link all this stuff, so don't worry. We are here now on the GitHub page. In the GitHub page, uh, you'll notice it is under the MIT license, which is interesting, because actually, if you look at the license.txt, um, it's a proprietary license internal. So there is a bit of a, a conflict there. I, I don't know what the dealio is. Um, but as you can see, it's very much actively up to being updated two days ago. Last update was, why can I never find that? Uh, two days ago. Yeah, so two days ago was the last time it was updated. It is very much actively under development. But here's where you can start getting into the documentation. So we got a bit of a walkthrough. Again, we got to look at the API. It's all really simple one word command type stuff. Uh, but this kind of walks you through loading maps, playing sounds, rendering textures, maps, you name it. So the basics of coding are all in here. Here's how you would load a song from the tracker and play it, uh, load the data in, the ditto for the sound effect thing, the bleeper. Um, so very simple and straightforward. So that is on the GitHub page, which again, I will link down below. And then we've also got in the... Um, on the, the itch.io page, there is now a beginner tutorial in the um, uh, the comment section or the, the discussion section. This does a bit of a walkthrough of how you can create your first game, get the code going. Again, the code is really clean and simple and straightforward. So this is a beginner friendly way to create games for sure. Um, but this kind of walks you through the very basics of getting up and running. And then finally, as I mentioned earlier on, the whole padded tracker like this, this would take me way too long to try and figure out how to use it. I, I've played around with it for a little while. It, it was just alien to me. But if you're used to trackers, this probably is going to be more intuitive to you. But as I mentioned, it is actually a standalone project that is incorporated in this. Uh, same author, same guy. Uh, but you can see here, uh, it can be downloaded on its own. And this has kind of a walkthrough of how all of this stuff works. So you see it can get really sophisticated and complicated stuff going on here. You can control with the keyboard directly. The instructions are here and you can actually download this for, um, let's see, Windows and Mac as well. And there's also a demo song. You can download or demo songs that you can download to get started and going. So if you wanna check out the tracker on its own, it is available here. And again, I will link this down below, uh, but there is a guide, online guide right here that will walk you through learning Pad a tracker. So this was, again, it would almost be the subject for its own video. If you're interested in just ignoring the game engine and just checking this thing out as a mod tracker, hey, it's there, it's fully functioning and uh, it might be to your taste, but the instructions are all here. Again, all those links will be down below. All right, so that is it. That is Pixelbox, a brand new game engine, uh, again, designed for the whole, um, you know, game jam kind of approach, uh, JavaScript on the back end, but it does all the work for you. So it'll do things like bundle and build it into an Electron app. It's basically got the ability to make it and ready to employ to like itch.io in pretty much one click. So uh, if you're if you're willing to do some JavaScript, and again, the JavaScript is very uh, easy and simple. He's made a library that's quite quite easy. Now, the only real catch you're going to have is your documentation is is rather limited. So if this isn't enough for you, probably not the engine for you. If this is enough for you, it's definitely worth checking out, especially if you are participating in a game jam coming up and you're kind of trying to get that retro aesthetic kind of going on. Could be a great engine for you. And also, I did look initially like this is only for really small fixed palette games. That doesn't necessarily have to be the case. That's just what the one demo we looked at had. So you could do, you know, full color sprites if you so wish. So that's it. That is uh, Pixelbox. Let me know what you think. Comments down below and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.